Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to talk a little bit about the notion of coloured gels. I'm not going to go massively into it. You've already seen some of it. You were seeing some of it last week. But I do want to talk a little bit about the 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 fun of them. And uh, so if I clip up there and there was, I mean, basically the thing is, uh, let me let me just show you here. It's, it's really simple. Once you've got your off-camera flash, um, one of the things that they have, most of them tend to have, is you can pull a little bit out here and it creates this. And this is a kind of a bit of a diffuser. So basically what happens is the light, instead of the light going absolutely straight, it hits this and it spreads out a little bit more. So that's the purpose of this. However, there's an extra little fancy bit, which is I've got a little, I mean, this was literally a little pack of photography gels, which I got in a cheap pack from Amazon, I think it was. And you can see a little square there. So that's an orange one, uh, blue one, uh, red. So, I mean, that all they are is a little sheet of cellophane, just slightly larger. And so what you can do is you can just flip that up, slot that in and stick it over. And quite simply, it kind of holds it in place. Now, you can get proper little things that you can stick over the front of the flash and uh, to slot these into. Um, I think I got one with a pack and never really quite got round to using it. Um, it slots in, it does the job. Uh, if you don't want to go as far as that, I mean, honestly, the, I mean, whether it's the insides of sweet, certain sweetie wrappers or, um, you know, bits of old, uh, you, you'll find bits of coloured cellophane in, in all sorts of bits of packaging. Um, experiment. If you've got a flash that you can take off camera and still trigger, whether it's through remote triggers or the light system that I was talking about or a cable. Stick it off to one side and stick a bit of colour over it. And it's really as simple as that. You end up with different different colour things going on. Um, to, to give you a, a taste of a couple of ways I've used, I've used this kind of thing. Um, you saw... For those of you who were watching last week, um, I was talking about uh, the photo. So let's pull up this photo. Um, this one where it's a colorful photo and I've got a blue gel over here and I've got a red gel over here. And that's really adding to the richness of the color. But I've also got the main light coming in um, just sort of to, to, to light them in general. Uh, but what happened here, there was a couple of photos where there was a couple of times where the main one didn't go off. So if you look at this, here you can see it's just blue and just red came out. So that's what you can see where, the, where it sort of is lighting up and you get some really interesting effects going on. Uh, now, you can't see the face for the purpose of the, the shoot, this was no good. But I quite liked it. And then there was another one where, uh, in fact, even before this, while I was testing the lights, a lamb nesha was just before she got changed into kimonos, was uh, just sitting on the edge of the bed. And you've got this silhouette, it's sort of partial silhouette. Um, and you can see her face lit up in red on one side, blue on the other. Again, her shoulders creating. And then the background, the, the, the cloth in the background also Kept the folds are catching the light. And there's something really quite interesting about it, quite fun about it. And I think if I hadn't been so caught up in the fact that actually the shoot wasn't about these colours, the shoot was about the kimonos, then I might have sat and played a bit more with that. And in fact, playing with blue and red ones, um, a few years ago, uh, my niece Kesha is a DJ out in uh, Indonesia she, uh, and uh, Southeast Asia, she does a lot of uh, amazing stuff. And it, she was back in Britain and I was doing a wee photo shoot for her. And we had another one where I was just playing with the colored gels. And uh, I think, you know, although this wasn't what it was meant, you know, the main photos, 
that she did kind of fall in love with this one and wanted to have a copy of this as well. So you can play with colours just to sort of go a little bit more graphic design, really, if you want. Um, but that's, use, that's using colours where it's all about the colour. But so often what you can do is you can use colours to emulate more natural lighting when the natural lighting itself isn't giving you what you need. So an example of that would be, let's take uh, this one. I think I was showing this one as an example um, a few weeks ago. That was when I was talking about diagonals with, I think, and, and the putting energy into a shoot. But the bit I want to draw your attention to on this one here is the light that's coming from behind Doug's head. There's a little window and there's a yellow light which is coming through and hitting the wall over here. And it absolutely feels like what you have is a low evening sun coming through the window, hitting the wall. And uh, you know it's, it's got that yeah really warm golden hour, just pre-sunset feel to it. Uh, similarly, uh, this photo here, done of Hannah, so slightly moved around the angle, the light's hitting the wall, but a bit of it's just catching the edge of her hair, lighting up. And I can guarantee you without that light, this would have looked quite, the, all the background would have been quite dull and she would have just had a white light on her and it wouldn't have been anything like as interesting a photo. But the thing is with that light, that little window behind Doug's head there, is actually only about six foot away from a wall on the side of the house. The sun doesn't get there, the sun cannot. There's no scenario ever where the sun could possibly get in at that angle. And what had happened was I wanted to have a backlight, um, but th it was a very small space and there wasn't a lot of, and I couldn't really figure out where to put it, but they had this window. So I went and put the light outside the window. I put it through an umbrella, a diffusing uh, little kind of, like a diffuser, a white, um, it's like a, uh, like a sheet in a way, but the light goes through it and it casts through and it lights up the window, and but with an orange gel on it. And it's that which is casting the light behind. Another example where you can play, where I played with the light, was this one, a uh, shoot I did for uh, a project called The Lost Chronicles of Galavidia, where people were dressing up in, in uh, historic characters, uh, from Dumfries and Galloway, you know, this corner of Scotland that I live in. Um, here we've got Matt dressed up in chain mail, uh, looking very ferocious with his sword and everything else. And what we've got here is I've got a three, three different lights, three different coloured gels, in fact. So the main light that's coming in and lighting up his face is, and also light, is, is uh, got a slight, has got a very thin yellow Thing on it and what I wanted to do was create a kind of feeling of candlelight and because he's got this great big fancy candlestick just off to the right here so getting that candlestick so but then what I've also done is I've put a flash with an orange gel over in the fireplace on the right now from here because it's just on the edge and you can't see the full fireplace but you can see the glow you naturally assume that there's a fire glowing in there and then I've put a blue gel over in the window on the uh, on the left. Um, it was just a little, to look almost like a kind of shaft of moonlight kind of coming through. And that's lighting up this side of him and a little bit under the front of the table. So three different lights, three different gels, all emulating some form of natural light. Whereas the reality is in this space here, it's, kind of, it's a cellar really at the bottom of Bittle Tower. Um, and there's virtually no light at all. You know, there's just this tiny little slit where of, of a window, um, but best will in the world, you would never be able to take any kind of photo in natural light there. So that's really, what it's back to that thing then, that really what I wanted to do, and to, to show you this again, you know, we've got the notion of like, she's lit by candlelight here, and then there's maybe again, a streak of moonlight coming through from the right. So get hold of some coloured gels, uh, even if you've got static lights, you know, get a sheet of, of, of cellophane of some kind, um, 
Sometimes if you've got a thin enough piece of cloth um, and you've got a strong enough light, uh, you, you can put different bits of cloth across it. Uh, but play with the colour, you know? It's, it, it gives you a whole new palette, a whole new area to play with, and it, it can be a huge amount of fun. Um, so that's really what I wanted to talk about with that. If you found this useful, let your friends know and hit subscribe.